Hello and welcome back to Polytoots. In today's video we will be retopologizing this character and we're also going to be doing an unwrap and a bake, uh, although those will likely be in a part two depending on sort of how long this stuff takes. Uh, I did debate actually sculpting this character f for a tutorial, but um, it was made uh, for a c competition uh, that a friend of mine has taken part in and he asked me to just sort of uh, help out with the art. So it was made pretty quickly uh, all in all and the whole thing is already done, uh, so if I'm smart enough I'll just uh, put up some links or video or something. Either way, there'll be some stuff in the description for a link to uh, the game. It's part of the uh, the GitHub game off. Um, yeah, anyway, I'm already rambling on, so let's just jump straight to it and start retopologizing this dude. We have this character that's made up of many layers, uh, and I advise anyone sort of who's making a character uh, to keep things as sort of split as possible. Um, but there are some sort of rules to keep in mind and we'll sort of cover this throughout as we go but um, the main thing to sort of keep in note is w we were doing a name correspondence for baking toward the end which means basically any name in the retopo layer that matches with this uh, vox tree layer it will bake them sort of independently so you don't have to worry about um, ambient occlusion and, and, and whatnot being sort of rendered on to this skin, uh, although that's kind of beside the point because I render the I mean, occlusion in the paint room. Again, I'm just rambling on. Let's just, uh, let's just do it. <laughs> so basically, let's just rename to this one the body. And let's get a capital B. I think the names have to match exactly. And so we'll start retopoing this dude. And for now, let's just hide everything else. Uh, oh yeah, I was planning to give him some feet, but I quickly ditched that idea and so I just gave him some shoes instead. It's not because I'm lazy, it's because I ran out of time. Um, yeah, so this is basically everything in the body layer, which includes uh, this belt and uh, some shorts. And uh, don't worry, he doesn't have anything uh, nude. In fact, he has uh, male presenting nipples, which means he won't even get banned from Tumblr, which is cool. Yeah, so by keeping this name the same as this name, the Retopo with the Vox tree, uh, with this uh, name correspondence for baking. Later on, basically, what will happen is everything within this layer uh, will bake everything and its child within the Vox tree layer. So that includes the shorts, um, which is, you know, something to keep in mind. Makes my life a little bit easier toward the end. Uh, and if this is confusing, don't worry, we're going to kind of go through all of this. So let's just kind of get started on some stuff. And the way that I usually begin characters is uh, with the strokes tool. Uh, mainly to sort of sorting out just like a base um, arms or, or legs or something. So we'll start, uh, it doesn't really matter where we start, let's just start with the legs for now. Um, number of segments, I'll bring this down to eight is probably okay. I'll just hit return, and okay, it's done something a bit weird there, so let's undo that. Let's try and find out why that wouldn't have worked. Uh, probably because of this, so um, if I shift and click on this stroke, I can get rid of it, and yeah, so that's that's the problem there, and then it kind of went and went and caught the shorts as well. Uh, so yeah, hopefully it didn't catch anywhere else, so let's just do another one through there, and that should, no, it's going to catch on the back. <laughs> aye, aye, aye. Okay, let's just put it lower down, hit return. So now we have that. Uh, yeah, and as I was saying about not needing to put the line in here, so I can with the uh, points of faces tool or add and split. Um, add and split will just kind of, I think, uh, ah, sorry, is it not add and split? Uh, no, I'm pretty sure Pretty sure it was, maybe I'm not in edges mode or something. Either way, I don't use the Adam Splits tool. So I'll do uh, the points and faces. And if you just hold control, that will split. So this is what was supposed to happen with the add and split, but I'm not sure what's going on there. I tried control and shift and whatnot, but didn't do anything. So yeah, you can just add in things later on. Uh, so for now, uh, I'll actually just keep it kind of simple as is. Um, again, with the points and faces tool, I'm just right clicking to kind of uh, get this a bit kind of straighter. I should probably mention that there will be sections in this video where I'll be sort of uh, fast forwarding through some stuff, you know, because essentially once you've seen how 
one thing is kind of built, there's no point in uh, waiting like another half an hour to watch the whole of the thing get built. But uh, we'll see. I'll try to sort of stop, and if there's anything that's actually worth kind of mentioning, I, I will mention it. Um, in fact, we will kind of keep this. We will put that in there. So there's a bit of the leg. And for the shorts, what I'm actually going to do, because it's not like they come out a whole lot, they don't really sag down. Um, this is actually just going to be sort of part of the mesh, so uh, I'm going to sort of just do something like this, where it's actually kind of included with the legs. Uh, the only sort of problemish area is here, but uh, I have done this before. Like as I said, this character is actually sort of complete in, in the game now, and uh, it worked fine. Uh, the game, I mean, you always have to consider the context of the game when you're doing sort of a retopology, but um, these characters aren't really ever seen super up close. I mean, they're pretty up close, but uh, for a detail like that, it's uh, d debatable as to w whether or not it's worth it. I certainly wouldn't say no to adding it in, but at the same time, it was uh, acceptable to sort of not have it in. Um, so yeah, I'm just going to continue building this up a bit here. And I don't like to kind of start with one area and then expand kind of all the way up until I'm finished. Uh, I'll kind of do an amount of one area and then move on to another area. So like for now with the legs, I'll probably just stop there and I'll just come on to the arms. So again with my strokes. Wherever you draw this green line, uh, it's usually where it will put one of the edges. So you know if it's uh, like an eight segmented stroke, uh, stroke, not stroke, uh, essentially a cylinder that will wrap around. You will, you know that with this green line, this is where one of your edges will be. So if I were to hit return on this now, you can see it's this line that was created here. So pretty handy. And then just match it off there and just weld these up by just moving them over. And sometimes uh, with 3D coat, it looks like it has welded, but uh, it actually hasn't. So you have to kind of do it again. And then I usually kind of just test. Like you know, right now, I've selected this and I'm trying to pull it off to the right, but it's not working. So same with this one. So that's that's usually how you know that things have been properly kind of welded. Um, yeah. So you have something like this. Maybe probably be a bit higher. Um, and essentially, the idea behind this is, is it's just that it's an animation loop. So when it comes to rigging and the character, you know, is moving his arms about and whatnot, there's there should be, you know, a little bit of influence uh, happening somewhere else. Like it's not all constrained to this area. So you're not just having like a mess of polygons kind of meet here and end here. Uh, you want it to kind of affect other areas. Uh, nowadays, like you see people do these sort of auto topologies and their characters are basically just you know like 50,000 triangles or whatever then um, animation loops kind of go out the window a little bit I mean it's bad topology but um, in terms of sort of moving the arm and having these areas over here also kind of move a bit you know it it, it works you know like there's no denying that it works it's just uh, if any other artist were to look at it they just say that's that's horrible please stop modeling like that um, but yeah, uh, I'm not the the greatest sort of character artist in the world, so I mean, don't take what I say or what I do as gospel. But um, I mean, there is no but. Um, essentially, uh, if you want like some really good topology tips, uh, have a look up of uh, I think either Ben Mathis or there's a guy called J Jonathan Rush. Who I think if you were actually just to search for um, polycount, um, good topology or polycount topology, it'll it'll bring you to this kind of um, polycount Wikipedia pagey thing, not Wikipedia like a polycount thing. Um, and a lot of the images there are from uh, the, like the guys like Ben Mathis or uh, J Jonathan Rush, uh, and they they. 
they know what they're doing. A lot of the examples there are, are kind of pretty old school, like really kind of... Um, oh, that's not working very well. Pretty, yeah, so sorry. Uh, pretty old school, um, very much kind of reflecting of the time when, you know, each sort of polygon was important and you really kind of had to think about uh, the skinning weights of each vert and whatnot. And to a certain extent, that's still possible. Um, but when this happens, uh, that's bad. That's, I mean, that's not something that should happen. I don't know why this happens, but if it does, you kind of just have to, like, start again with that, basically. Uh, so yeah, do that again. Uh, yeah, so ch check it out. Maybe uh, if I remember, I'll try to provide a link in the description. Um, it's doing it again. It's weird. So it's not happening here. It's not happening here. Uh, yeah, if it's not sort of obvious, I'm in symmetrical mode, so I should not be able to do that. And, you know, even down here it's saying that we have perfect symmetry, but uh, obviously we do not. So I'm just going to kind of try to find out what's going on here. Now this area over here, uh, the shoulder. The shoulder is, uh, it's always been a pain to rig, but, um, you know, you can only kind of do your best. You sort of want a shape that kind of follows the muscle and then kind of like loops around under the armpit so everything is kind of uh, isolated and contained um, so this is going to be it's it's one of those things like if I had modeled a bunch of characters before doing this tutorial I'm sure uh, it would have come a lot easier but um, what I'm gonna actually going to do is I'm going to delete these entirely and I'm going to actually get rid of this as I was saying before about sort of getting in your sort of stronger forms first, uh, essentially I'm going to create the shape that I want for the shoulder and then we'll have to kind of just like tweak and fix the connecting shapes uh, to, fix, to, fix, to fix uh, into it, like to connect with it. So. Just do something like that. And so, you know, if I'm holding control now, uh, you can see that this is, you know, a complete ring that kind of goes around, uh, which is pretty handy kind of tip because often you kind of end up with uh, what I like to call the sort of corkscrew meshes in that when you look at like the loop that it creates and it just sort of keeps on going and going and going, um, that's that's a bad, it's a bad place to be. Uh, yeah. So what I can see just from looking at it, like this loop line here, uh, so it's starting on this face over here and it comes, oh, I can't f follow with the mouse, but it comes down here uh, and then it actually goes off over here, whereas the opposite of this face is actually over here. So this should be coming up to there in order for this to be kind of, you know, symmetrical. So let's just uh, get rid of some pieces and Let's just try to sort of reconstruct it a little bit manually. In fact, just to make life a little bit easier, I'll get rid of these as well. And, oh, auto save. So yeah, this comes along here. So we just need it to go up and then that would be the correct shape. So now you see it does that. And so we're all fine and dandy, and so then we just do that there, and fixed.
Let's actually move on a bit to the neck. And I have a tie here. Um, so I'd like my kind of my first ring line to, to kind of follow this t tie line. We will be modeling the tie separately, but um, just having the kind of like a, a similar sort of t topology to what's on top to what will be on bottom uh, could save us a lot of headaches later, uh, especially when it comes to sort of skinning and animating. You know, if you've got um, geometry that isn't really, you know, it's like no way near in line with each other. Like if, if you have these sort of weird uh, loops kind of doing this stuff and then for the tie you have it just coming along here. I don't know if it's a tie or a scarf. I keep, I've I've called it tie. I apologize if it's a, like a sailor scarf or something. Um, yeah, then when he animates, uh, you could end up with, you know, the head kind of going through the tie or vice versa. Um, so you can alleviate some of that by just kind of keeping the topology uh, the same. And it also kind of helps in this specific instance. Uh, let me just actually ghost out the tie. I think if it's ghosted, it won't let me. Yeah, okay, that's cool. Um, there will be scenarios, um, not on this character, but uh, with other characters where you might want to split the head from the main body. So it's still part of the same skeleton, like still uses the same animations and whatnot. Uh, but if you split it from the body, then you can do uh, like morph targets and things, you know, you can kind of, uh, so you don't have to put in like crazy amounts of bones for his eyes or like his nose if you wanted to kind of flare up or something or uh, you know, basically just morph target animation stuff. Uh, this is pretty annoying. Okay, let's just undo that. Let's use the quarter tool instead. Um, yeah, because one of the main problems with uh, morph targets is uh, there's usually like a just a big seam of where you've actually kind of split the head from the body. Um, while you can certainly um, skin it to be uh, the same. It's like like the same weights from where the head and the neck are split so when he animates you know it's not like it's tearing a hole open or anything um, but there will still be a kind of um, like an obvious kind of seam that's been split in, by the geometry and like no amount of sort of t texture uh, tricks will fix that um, and so if you have a character that has something like this like a scarf or a tie or a collar or something uh, it's often it's often really good to kind of hide his sort of base geometry with the same kind of flow as whatever's on top of it because if we were to sort of eventually at least have a line here or whatever and this line here that we just made was actually where we split then this tie would hide all seams created when we kind of split the head um, but again just to kind of reiterate I'm not actually splitting this character's head he doesn't need uh, Morph targets.
there might as well be like a straight line that comes down here and from here uh, you could just sort of keep it as like, um, a grid you know like kind of like that uh, but I usually try to sort of put in a bit of a, a curve here uh, I don't really know why I do that actually I don't know if it's a uh, good topology or bad topology probably should have looked that up before um, actually no sorry I'm forgetting it's the curve that follows this way so um, yeah we're gonna have to do something well I mean I'll show you what I mean Okay, so something like that, uh, and then we're probably going to want to introduce, because this would, ordinarily it would be like a triangle, but we kind of want to do uh, something a bit different here. Uh, we don't really have the geometry, because ideally that would kind of be over here, but then we've got too much stretching happening there, so... Uh, I'll leave it kind of like this for now. We'll see what happens later. Yeah, there's always going to be sort of areas that you meet and you realize, like here, for example, one face, but we need to try to combine it into sort of two. Uh, and that's fine, that's fine. Just so long as you kind of, you get like your main sort of loops down, you can just sort of tweak the rest and add them in and whatnot. Okay, so we do have this, uh, it's a bit of a problem, to be honest. Um, it seems like one of the solutions would be just to sort of create like an edge loop here, just to give us some more sort of triangles. But uh, I tried to very much avoid doing that because then you just, you end up with just like a million sort of loops ending like down at the foot. Um, so instead I kind of need to work something else out. And I think this one's probably going to have to attach onto there. And then we'll just sort of fill in the rest as is. Okay, that mirror thing is really annoying me. So for now I am going to turn mirror snapping up. Uh, I'll just have to make sure that I turn it down later. I don't know what a good percentage is. It goes up to a thousand so I mean I just I don't know. Um, let's just see if something like that will work. Seems to be okay and I think normally like this uh, mirror snapping thing like you, you may have noticed like if I put this down to zero uh, come on now zero and I create sort of, you know, points here and points there. Uh, and then if I were to create a quad out of this, um, it keeps this sort of blank. But I think with a high mirror snapping, so let's bump it up a bit. Uh, if we do the same again, you can see already that it's just created like one point. And again, just one point because we were close enough to the edge. And so now it has actually created that. So uh, yeah, it's kind of good. Uh, pretty handy, but I... I I have a strong suspicion that it's the reason that a lot of my mesh kind of messes up from time to time. So, um, yeah, I'll keep it like 70% and then we'll just see, basically. Um, but anyway, it looks like we actually have an issue here. Uh, so we have this loop that's coming at the top and then that whole sort of ring above that is where the belt connects. But on the back side, uh, that is not the case. So for example, if we were to get rid of these faces and bring these up like so, then our ring at least is now correct, but we have just, you know, we have a gargantuan amount of uh, space here. Um, and the easy solution to that is probably just to add in a loop or two, which uh, I probably will do. There's not a whole lot going on here. We have um, 
sort of a lot of polygons that have arranged themselves here so we could do a little bit better in sort of moving those around. this uh, okay so there's a bit of a problem there now we have this massive face so yeah to us it's this is a uh, it's kind of an area where you might think okay let's just add in a loop and we can just add in some uh, nice geometry here everything's sort of simple um, but I was saying before I don't like having all these loops kind of converging down to a single point and this is an area that honestly it's you know it's not a priority area on the character uh it will largely never be seen so i'm actually completely kind of okay with uh well i say i'm completely okay we'll see what it looks like in a bit but i think for the most part i'm more than happy with that uh i'm not happy with my vertex placement but uh topology wise it's kind of okay. As I say, it's like a pretty low priority area. This, for example, uh, not the best, like this entire sort of area here, because the the armpit is obviously, it's a big sort of area that moves and stretches, and it's got this face to work with on the other side, so you're going to get a lot of stretching there. And again, it's kind of up to you uh, whether or not that's a good thing or a bad thing but for me uh, yeah I don't like it so uh, let's get rid of that face and obviously we're gonna need to gonna need to do something else here so maybe uh, go back to the points and faces we probably should actually kind of try to continue this ring out a little bit more so something more like that so this kind of continues You know, if you're trying to keep your mesh all quads for some insane reason, um, this is really not a good way to do it because it's it's just it's going to create animation problems, and you making the mesh out of complete quads just for this one area is uh, kind of redundant. Like you might as well just use a triangle if your if your quads going to look like that. Um, but in terms of how we can actually try to fix this, uh, it's a good question. <laughs> it's uh, it looks like a very tricky area. Um, one of the obvious sort of answers is uh, if we were to create a loop kind of along here give ourselves some extra geometry uh, and maybe add in something else here uh, again it's kind of just like adding things in to try and sort of end up with a quad outcome but uh, not really ideal so instead uh, I'm gonna potentially break another one of my rules here in that uh, if I go back to points and faces real quick uh, we have this loop line for the neck which is a good thing it's a very good thing but what we can do is actually sort of change the loop of it to kind of keep things a little bit uh, better there so that now wraps around there so we, we've lost that sort of neckline um, slightly we, could, we're, we haven't lost it we're, we're, we're basically going to move it so we still have a ring that goes around there and so then we should know that that should eventually connect around the back although again it looks like we have the exact same problem over there um but yeah it's uh it's not not the greatest fix of all time but you know it's kind of uh it's just sort of what happens whenever you try to kind of create um, geometry forms and then fill in the blanks there will be areas where you kind of need to just make a couple of sacrifices so you know I've just added that in there and now at least we still have our neckline um,
Okay, so I'm actually going to simplify this a lot more. I'm going to get rid of all of this because at the moment it's kind of just complicating things. And go to points and faces, clear points because there was an extra sort of weird thing there. So, okay, let's kind of take a step back for a second. Uh, let's connect this up. I'm probably just going to end up kind of recreating what was there before, but this time at least pay attention to the rules. So we have come on now, we have this line here, which will go sort of all the way down. That is completely A-OK. -okay. And then before, we kind of had this weird uppy shape here, so I'm actually going to just create a straight line there instead. So that just goes straight, um, which means this part here is now more OK. And it also makes it very easy now to just continue uh, with what we had here. And we've actually only ended up with um, at the moment at least three additional faces which uh, I do believe is actually less than what we had there before. We're probably going to need a little bit here anyway, just to connect up with the mouth, but I kind of like what I have here. So let's try to think of some other solution. And one thing to do is, uh, let's actually let's get rid of this face for now. And what we'll do is, so we'll create the two that we need. Uh, those will probably be connected, so that's fine. Uh, yeah, I kind of need to move some of these around, but oh anyway, yeah, so we've created the two that we need, but we, obviously this is only one face here, it needs to go into two. So what I will do is just, uh, since we have, oh, get out of the way, um, since we have quite a lot of space down here anyway, and we are going to have to introduce another loop because of the, uh, the curvature here, might as well just do that now. And then you can do something like this, and then you've got quad and quad. So something like that.
Okay, so that's like the head f filled in, but uh, really kind of not a fan of what I've done here. It's, it's all kind of like uh, clumped up and uh, I mean, I'm okay with the topology itself. It's it's uh, more to do with like the, the actual sort of placement of stuff like this whole clump. It, it would be better off if it was kind of spread back a bit because everything just kind of comes too far ahead. So uh, what I'm actually going to do is, is a, uh, I think there's a, some sort of relaxed feature. It might just be the brush. If you get the brush uh, and potentially, I think if you hold shift, yeah, if you hold shift, you can kind of relax things. Uh, otherwise you can just sort of move things around. So I'm just going to come in here and I'm going to have a little sort of tweak with some stuff. Uh, probably going to come back to this area right here. Uh, I'm likely going to change that, but uh, yeah, for now I'll just sort of continue with this and then we'll see what's what. Uh, yeah, I mean the nice thing about like this uh, fin area is um, at least for this particular character it would mostly I think even like a, a hundred percent like the uh, the verts here would be weighted to one of his spine bones so uh, yeah this fin doesn't actually kind of move. Uh, you could if you wanted to add in like an extra bone to maybe like wiggle it a bit um, but for the most part it's, uh, it's, it's sort of a non-moving object you know like it it itself doesn't really deform, it kind of just follows the deformity of others. Uh, so we don't really need to pay too much attention to, uh, you know, like super clean topology. Like if this ends up sort of culminating in kind of like triangles and whatnot, then, you know, I'm not gonna cry about it, you know, I won't lose any sleep. Uh, so let's just basically just try and see what we can do um, with the loops that we have. So I'll be back in a moment. Yeah, so even now, you know, I'm trying to lay down a point, but it's, you know, it appears there, uh, but it's not quite there. And I, I think that's basically just to do with the mirror snapping and that it's so close to the center anyway, that it's just going to try and merge it. Uh, so yeah, at this point, I'm going to get rid of my mirror snapping and also make sure my points are cleared. So this should at least now attach itself to the surface. Yeah. Okay, it does mean that we're going to have to mess about with this stuff again, but uh, it's a small price to pay. Uh, and one other little thing that I'm probably going to do is rather than, you know, try and weld these things up and connect them bit by bit, uh, something that I could have done before as well, but if I just start to actually move up like the whole thing, if it will let me grab this bit. Uh, there we go. So I'll just move up this whole thing and then all, all I'll do is actually just um, like split it once it reaches a point. I won't take it too far, like I won't go beyond sort of this point because then it might create some uh, some weird issues when I try to add the split in, but the mesh already exists like well underneath the actual mesh. So I'll stop it about there and we can just, you know, add in a couple cuts.
uh, yeah, we do have this area here, uh, and I have noticed that, that like it's on actual sharks as well. Like their gums are actually kind of split uh, in the middle. It's uh, it's pretty gross to look at, but um, I have the shape there, and I kind of want to keep that shape even with the the low poly. So um, what I'm actually going to do is sort of just create a bit of a split here. Um, and that might mean that I'll need to kind of just s separate these up, in fact probably almost certainly. Um, but just to remind myself as I'm coming around that uh, that is definitely going to be something that we're modeling in. All right, so that's basically the base shape of it done. So now um, just going to kind of come in here, add in these sort of animation loops for the uh, the knees and the elbows. And the more I look at sort of this chest area here, the more I think maybe we should try to do something. In fact, uh, the answer actually is kind of already there because we've already got these two faces coming in, so we might as well just continue those. And so what it is I'm actually going to do is uh, I am going to introduce a triangle here. Uh, so with the oops, with the add and split tool, uh, I'll just use the one with the points and faces because it's easier. So I'm just going to introduce that and and there we go. So that should be fine. And yeah, this triangle here. Uh, that isn't going to be too much of an issue because if you think about how this area will kind of d deform anyway, you know, it will kind of collapse in a bit there, stretch a bit out here. So having this triangle right there, it shouldn't prove troublesome. It's much better for a mesh to kind of like intersect with itself once it's once it's kind of bent, um, as opposed to sort of collapsing on itself. Uh, and what I mean by that is, let me just get in some extra stuff here. Uh, so this forearm here, if it were to rotate, uh, you want to make sure that your shapes kind of stay uh, as as they are. Like you want to keep the silhouettes of them like as strong as possible. And so if these vertices here were to kind of like go inwards because it's trying to sort of weight both ways and it kind of just collapses in on itself, um, it looks pretty ugly. And so it's one of those things where 
oftentimes using like less triangles here uh, will actually sort of help you out like a lot more um, so what I'm just gonna do is use probably just probably just this amount for that and as this kind of bends in uh, sort of this row here like this vert here uh, this will be weighted to sort of the uh, upper arm bicep bone and this foot here would be weighted to the forearm so that when this one rotated uh, it isn't going to sort of squish and pinch that other one in it's just going to come straight up and it's probably going to clip through but as i said clipping through is actually it's sort of it's preferred um, hopefully i'll get uh, an image up on screen there is one by jonathan rush on the poly count thing which kind of just it explains the whole thing so well so uh, yeah I'll try to include that um, yeah so the only thing you need to do is if this is where it's going to sort of collapse in or well not collapse in sort of intersect in this is sort of one part of the elbow um, you want to make sure you have enough sort of loops on the other side So yeah, that should probably wrap it up for the body, uh, unless I'm forgetting anything else. I don't think so though. Plus, I mean, we're going to go over everything kind of as we keep working on it anyway. So yeah, that'll do for now. Uh, I'll see you in the next part where we'll continue with everything else.